couple guys doing videos yesterday or day before yesterday or whenever about uh, you know what to look for when you're buying another mower or buying your first commercial mower or your uh, well or not even a new one it doesn't have to be a new one because they're pretty expensive you know I always tell guys when they when they first come in the game that I would never spend the kind of money that you see me spend on lawnmowers because you, there's a lot of unknowns and you have to make sure that it's something that you know that you're going to want to do so but if you get if you come in the game and and your equipment is uh, not not uh, you know mid quality equipment then you might get very frustrated with your timing and all and you might feel like you're not making a lot of money because and then you just have to look at the mower that you got a lot of times uh, people think that they can make as much money with a you know a residential mower that's as they can with a commercial mower for you know for a third of the price and you can make a living but you're probably going to get frustrated eventually you're not going to be able to do them do the properties as efficient as you could with a commercial mower so i'm just throwing that out there and i don't it's not a dig on anybody because they got homeowner mower or or, or whatever but you're going to find that the more you the more money you spend for a lawnmower the more production you're going to get out of that lawnmower that's what i have found and that's just my opinion you know uh so uh, so one of the things that uh, one of the things i look for is i look for uh, you know where the dealer is and what's the dealer location from you know where I work at and where I live at okay uh, because you go you want good dealer support you know and not every dealer is the same trust that so you know uh, and of course you know if you buy a new mower then You got to look at the warranty and whenever i buy a new mower whether i got the money or not i'm always looking for the no interest the no interest the 48 months no interest or whatever it is right because usually they have deals and a lot of times that's the best way to get a, a, a you know a newer commercial mower now uh, that's just you know but dealer location is a lot. It means a lot to me. Uh, and I have to know the, how available are the parts for these mowers. See, that's another problem that people have with, you know, homeowner mowers coming into this game. And again, I'm not a dig at, at anybody for starting out and starting out with a homeowner mower. I did. But I, I learned pretty quickly that they're harder to work on than the commercial mowers. They're not as powerful as the commercial mowers. And they're not really built for the rigors of cutting grass all day, every day, and being efficient and uh, all that. So, you know, and, and y'all notice I haven't even said anything about price point. Well, price point is a factor. Now, let's just keep it real. It's a factor no matter if you're me, been in business for 15 years, or you're somebody coming in business and this is your first year. If it's your first year and you're going into this season as your first year uh, and you haven't done this uh, or you're just trying to do it on the side, I would not buy a, a, a brand new mower. You know, uh, I wouldn't. That's just my personal opinion. I would, I would buy a mower that's used. I would research and I would uh, try to find a mower that uh, is a commercial mower that has a good rep and that kind of thing, you know. But you are rolling the dice. And you gotta look at the hours on the machine. You can't look at, you know, uh, well, you, you know, you, you have to, you have to know about machines. So I guess really, you know, you need to do a little research so if i were going if i knew that i were going in business this summer coming up then i would be doing research on mowers back in september because you're going to find a better deal on a lawn mower in september october november than you are right now 
because a lot of people that did that that did go buy a new mower that did work last summer outside and did realize they don't like it or it's too hot or blah blah they can't stay busy enough or whatever then they're going to more like sell that mower September, October, November, December you know when you start rolling into spring that's the, the, the worst time to be buying a lawnmower like right now to me it's my opinion so it's something to think about uh, and, and you got to look at the dealer reputation is the dealer known uh, to do good work uh, there's a lot of ways you can find this out uh, you know you can you know do the Google reviews and you can kind of just I don't know um, just research the dealer I guess you know uh, and then you want to know what size deck if I were starting out in this game and I'm just going to say it if I were starting out in this game and I'm not buying a brand new mower and I'm not sure what properties I'm going to buy. I mean, I'm not, and I'm not sure what properties I'm going to do. Well, there are some things that I need to think about before I go to spending, you know, uh, the money for the top mower. I need to, I need to know what property is my target. Am I targeting, you know, subdivision neighborhoods? Am I targeting, you know, bigger cuts? Or not only targeting that that. But what is falling in your lap? What is coming your way without you having to target anything? See, that was, I didn't really have to target anything. This is the, the properties that I do, y'all see me do, they just came my way, right? They, I didn't go market to go cut 14 acres. It just came my way. And I was, but I was, uh, where I live at, a lot of properties are big. So, uh, but if I were going, if I were starting in the game right now, and I would be trying to find me a 48 inch or a 52 inch. Now, knowing what I know, I wouldn't be scared to buy a 60 inch. But see, you're not—you don't know what I know yet. If you're just starting, you gotta. But you gotta make sure you have a mower that is a lot more universal than a 60 inch. Though a 60 inch is by far pound for pound of the most efficient mower that you could probably buy. Somebody might, some people might disagree with me, but to me, they're the most efficient mower friendly for a, a multitude of properties, okay? But a 48 inch is not gonna cost as much as a, as a 60, and a 48 inch, you're gonna be able to make money on any property, pretty much, or 52. So, but you wanna make sure that you get a mower that is, uh, the most universal and since you don't know what properties you're, you're 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 doing or you're going to be getting or you're marketing for then you got to kind of be in the middle somewhere and being in the middle somewhere is not going to cost you as much much money either because a 48 is not going to be as expensive as 60. so that's another thing to think about uh what properties are you doing what properties are you targeting what what where uh where you're at with that that's important man so that's a, that, that's another factor, uh, and above all, y'all, and this is just my opinion, you have to be planning. You have to be planning ahead of time uh, to figure out what mower you're going to buy. You know, uh, by doing your own research on mowers and things like that. See, over the over the years. I've learned a lot about lawn mowers, just a lot, you know, because I'm interested in machines. I like machines, I'm, so I know a pretty good bit about lawn mowers. I'm not bragging or nothing, but I do. I've been doing the lawn care game for, you know, a long time. So it's it's a given that I know what mowers are good and which ones are are okay and which ones are not as good for me, for my for what I do. I can't speak for, you know, uh, anybody else, and I'm I, I don't really think if you're coming into the game that the brand is well the brand doesn't matter as much as what you need and the availability okay we know that you know we have there's four or five top brands but they're pricey and coming in the game if you don't know that you're going to be doing now now, if you know this is what you're going to be doing for the foreseeable future, 
and you know that this is something you can do maybe you've worked for a company you work for dad mom whatever and you've been out here in the game for uh you know a few years and now you're ready to run off on your own well then you you're more educated than the average joe that's working a nine to five that's going to try to get in the game because he sees his brother-in-law making a killing or whatever he's like you know but before you go to spending you know fourteen thousand dollars on a lawnmower make sure that it's something that, that this is something that you're going to be doing and also make sure that the fourteen thousand dollar lawnmower is the the size deck mower that you need for your properties that you're already doing you know uh that's why i say do not buy a brand new lawnmower when you're first getting in the game because you don't really know what you need Go on and find you a used mower and learn and just go through the rigors of learning. And then you can, and then by the time you do a season out here, you'll realize and understand exactly what mower you need, exactly what size deck you're needing, right? And exactly what kind of power you need and, and all of that, you know. Uh, so, you know, and then of course you gotta figure out, do you wanna sit down or stand up? Well, if you're, you know, if you're 30 or under, you probably going to, you might want to stand up. Now, when it comes to price point, there, there, it, there's a difference. The, the, the sit downs are more expensive, but not, it's not like double or nothing. Uh, and I might be wrong. I, I haven't, I haven't priced mowers this year, but I would say that if you're spending uh, $11,000 on a new commercial lawn mower, that the equivalent stand-up mower is probably gonna be nine or 8,500. So that tells you, you know, for the exact same mower that's a stand-up or stand-on, excuse me. So the price point is, you know, is not enough uh, of a difference to for me to make a decision on a stand up you know i don't like to stand on the mowers but i'm a lot older too you know uh that's just my preference the stand on mowers cut great i mean they're and they don't take up room on a trailer there's a lot of benefits to a stand on mower but then that falls right back to the default what properties are you looking to do what size properties are in your wheelhouse that's falling in your lap? And if they're properties like the one y'all just saw us do today, you're not gonna wanna stand on. You know, of course, you're not gonna get a property like that in the very beginning because you don't really have the uh, mowers and the, uh, uh, or the machines to do a property like that and make money at it. See, there's a big difference in, you know, anybody can go cut that property you could you could hop on that property with a 52 inch deck a 48 inch deck and you could cut that 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 big property that we cut today but you're not gonna be able to make money at it because it's gonna take you way too long and that's a big factor so the same thing applies to the stand on mowers that applies to the sit down mowers what is your target you know uh, if I'm gonna buy, it's just me, and it's not a dig. I wanna make sure I keep saying that. It's not a dig, I'm just explaining my thinking. For me, the stand-on mowers are great. But if I'm gonna buy a stand-on mower, I'm not gonna buy a 60-inch stand-on mower. That's just me. People do buy them and they're, they're, they cut just as good as a sit-down mower, don't get me wrong. But for me and my business, and for the price point difference, I'm, and, and, and it's, I'm already thinking I'm on a 60 inch deck, so that tells me right there that I made the decision or the, the, the type of lawns that has fallen into my wheelhouse are lawns that are bigger. So I don't wanna stand up. So if I'm gonna buy a stand on mower, it's gonna be a 48 inch or something like that, something right in the middle. Uh, that's just me. Or what I do but there's a lot of benefits to a stand on mower I'm a realist you know number one benefit is they're a little bit cheaper 
Number two benefit is they don't take up as much space on a trailer, so you might be able to get two of them on there. Or if where, where I can get one Z turn, you can get two standones. So you can be more efficient on certain jobs than I can with with one mower. And you can have, you know, two. You can have a 52 inch or a 48 inch and a 36 inch or whatever. Me personally, I'm not gonna buy a 36 inch stand on mower. That's just my personal preference because the price point is not friendly enough for me. It doesn't make sense when I can go buy a 30 inch mower and though not as fast as a stand on mower, they don't cost as much either. You know, seven or 8,000 versus, you know, 2,000. And just from my perspective, being the business owner, I'm not the one out there pushing the grass anyway, usually. I can, and I do, and I will, but it's not usually what I do. There's a lot younger, able-bodied guys that work for me that, that'll do all that, that I'm just saying. So, but when I was their age, you could give me one of these, one of these commercial 30 X mark mowers, but a little more power, and I can, I, and I can do a lot. So that's another thing to think about. And of course, always, always, always the price. The uh, friendliness of the interest rate of the the 48 months no interest is very friendly. Uh, you know, so if you're like in year two or three and you've been, and you done been mowing lawns for the last couple of seasons and now you're ready to step up your game then that's when you know you, you by then you know what mower to buy you know exactly what mower it would take to do the properties that you're doing right now to do them faster and my personal opinion is i don't sell the mower that i got if there ain't nothing wrong with it that means i got two mowers now and when you got two mowers you could be more efficient rather and you got a backup that's another factor so uh if you've been in the game for a minute or, you know, if you've been doing it for a year or two and it's time to step up, well, you're good, you know. You're able to really, uh, you know, uh, see what equipment you need, right? You're able to see what equipment you need and and then by that time, you're a lot, you're a lot more educated on machines in general. So, to me, and I'll give y'all, and I ain't got no notes or nothing, I'll give you guys my top five or six mower manufacturers out there. That is my opinion, my opinion. So, you know, Exmoor and Skag, they, they run in neck and neck at the top to me in my area they run running neck and neck okay and then the ferris is right there is 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 second to in in my area this is just my opinion so i don't want to have a lot of backlash so since i have x marks i'm a little more uh friendly to the x marks so if i had to do a list of the top five mowers it would probably go something like this x mark and skag and then Ferris and Wright. And then that fifth mower if is, well, it would be Exmark, Skag, and then Toro. Exmark, Skag, Ferris, Toro, and then Wright. That 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 is, you know, the you know, the Toro, you know, grandstand or, or whatever, you know, their top commercial mower. Those are my top five manufacturers but you don't have to have narrow one of them to make a living out here you know well, why are those your top five because I've had every one of them I, I'm not saying and giving my opinion on something I've never owned I've owned every one of those mowers and another good mower brand is a uh, hustler that's a that's another that's right up that that's that's to me, Hustler and uh, the right mower uh, are right up there together. Uh, a Hustler is a damn good mower, man. They're built really good, just my opinion. 
uh, what else? Uh, and then you got some of these new, these up and comers, uh, at least in my area. You know, you got uh, bad boy mowers, and then you know you got the Spartan mower. Uh, I mean, you can make plenty of money. I guarantee you, I can buy one of them bad boy mowers, whatever mower that they, they got that's commercial, and I can make a living with it. Now. So, that's just a few things that I see that you need to be thinking about before you spend big money on a lawnmower. And just know that if you go out there and you spend $15,000 on a lawnmower and you're not ready for it and or you're not, you decide that you don't want to do this for a living, then you're going to take a hit on that mower. You're probably going to take to sell it. Uh, you're, you're going to take a hit. I ran into that with the Skag. The Skag had 100 hours on it and they were trying to give me $8,000 for it when I when I paid 14 for it. Because they lose their value really quickly. So you had to put you had to put some hours on it, make some money with it in order to co to to cover what you're going to the hit you're going to take if you sell it. But see, my whole philosophy is don't ever get in that spot if you're new in the game. Because if you're new in the game, you may not be able to overcome it. You know. Uh, and always look for the interest, the no interest. Always. And a lot of the dealers, they'll have, they have demos and stuff there too. And uh, I have bought a demo or two in my time as well. And... Uh, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, the demo will come with a warranty. So this is according to how many hours are on it and stuff. Usually, and I don't know for sure what it is now, because it's been a minute since I bought a brand new mower. Usually the warranties on the X marks, and it may have changed, it's like, you know, two years. Uh, I can't remember. Two or three years or you know, 750 hours or something like that. Now, don't quote me on that, but you know, but keep in mind too that you buy a new mower and you have some warranty problems. Sometimes the warranty problems, they'll, although they always come through and, they, and, they'll, and they'll, they'll fix it, you know, but your downtime is killing you. So that's another thing. Uh, you know, warranties is, is great until you have to use it. And then sometimes it's, you realize it's not so great, but if you buy a new mower, it automatically comes with it. I would not be afraid to buy uh, any Xmart machine, because I know a lot about Xmart, any Xmart or Skag machines uh, that have, you know, seven or 800 hours on it. I wouldn't be afraid to buy it. Of course, the value is not gonna be, you know, uh, way up there either. Uh, and, you know, I haven't done a lot of research on mowers because I got mowers. Um, but I would say if somebody came to me and they had an Xmark mower, 48 inch with, you know, a 24 horsepower engine on it. And it had, I don't know, uh, six or 700 hours on it. And it, you know, according to what size pumps are on it and, and, and a lot of other little factors. Four or five thousand dollars, you know, something like that. Uh, and another thing that I didn't mention, anytime I'm looking at a lawnmower, a commercial lawnmower, if it does not have a foot pedal on it, I don't even look at it any deeper than that. So, it's got to have a foot pedal to raise and lower the deck. That's a mandatory must. Just saying. I'm just throwing that out there. But yeah, but you can find deals on mowers if you if you know. But you got to know what you're looking for, and you got to know, and you got to have the money. You know, the bad thing about buying a used mower is you're going to come out of your pocket, you know, four or five thousand dollars and or whatever, and it's going to be an instant because if it's a good deal, you're going to have to make a decision very fast, especially this time of year. Because if you don't, 
then somebody like me will come by and buy it and while you're thinking about it just saying that. i mean it's happened to me many times so the first thing you gotta do is get your pocket you know get your money right you know so that's just a few things that i th that i think about when i'm buying a llama or a big ticket purchase the big ticket purchase has got to earn all right it's semi time tuesday y'all